Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Welcome back. This is my last night here at WBZ Radio and my last couple of hours. And I have uh, uh, worked at a uh, prepared statement. I don't normally work from anything prepared in terms of what I say because I, I don't feel uh, comfortable uh, doing things that are prepared. Uh, I'm not a good writer. I'm better at verbalizing my feelings. But today, because I wanted to make sure that I said uh, everything in compact form without uh, uh, going on, I have uh, put it together. It is with uh, great sadness and reluctance that I leave uh, WBZ in Boston and Massachusetts. I've uh, spent most of my adult life here, half of my radio and TV career, I've married my wife, Terry, in 1957, my first year in Boston, and all my children, my three girls, Eve, now 17, Susan, almost 16, and Andrea, who just turned 12, were born here at uh, Massachusetts Memorial Hospital, and they truly do not know any other home. And so I'm leaving Boston again, uh, this time most unwillingly, although my family will continue to live here. It is uh, difficult to recall all that I would like to at this moment. Certainly the most exciting times for me have been the hours I've spent on the air with senators and congressmen, governors, mayors, authors and critics, journalists, scientists, economists, frauds and ideologues, fascists and communists, liberals and conservatives, moderates and independents and experts from, from everywhere. The list of people uh, truly reads like a who's who in America. What an exciting time it's been for me. Truly an education for me. And I hope it's been the same for you because, after all, this is the function of this program, to inform and to entertain you who listen. And what a distinct pleasure it's been for me to perform on this great radio station, WBZ. Just saying it. WBZ Boston. WBZ Boston. That brings to mind the many other great performers and voices who have been on this great radio station. I will miss being heard on BZ, and most of all, I will miss the people who depended upon this program for information, enlightenment, and stimulation. I have not forgotten, how could I? I will not forget you in Dayton, Ohio, Rockford, Illinois, Charleston, West Virginia, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Baltimore, Washington, Virginia Beach, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Chicago, Cleveland, Charlestown, South Carolina, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Fort Lauderdale, Montreal, Toronto, and of course all of New England, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and the good old Bay State, Massachusetts and Boston, with whom I've had a love-hate relationship. I will miss all of you because this is really my home. And though I may not have been born here, it is the place of my choice, and it will be most difficult for me to adjust at this point in life to anything else. But as you probably know, I'll be at WTIC in Hartford, another giant of a station, starting October the 11th, 7 to 12 nightly, at 1080 on the dial. WTIC does carry the Whalers and the Red Sox and the Celtics, and I'll be on after those games on those nights, and Sundays I'll be heard on WMCA in New York at 570 on the dial. There is so much to be said in bidding farewell, I, I really don't know where to begin, so let's begin where we should at the beginning. Jim Lightfoot brought me back to Boston and WBZ in July 1968, although I did have offers to go elsewhere in the United States. I was in Chicago at the time. But Boston and Jim Lightfoot, the general manager, and Tony Graham, the program director at the time, convinced me to come to BZ. Jim Lightfoot has since passed away. He was a great broadcaster and a wonderful guy. Tony Graham is in New York now, and he was an inspiration to the work I do. My thanks, too, to Bob Oakes, the former program director, for his help and encouragement. He is now in, fl in Florida. There were many people who helped put this program together over the eight-year period. Early in the game, my old friend Paul Fanning, 
Jerry Wishnow, Steve Ellman, Kathy Bayless, Laura Dubofsky, Kathy Shapley, Ned Foster, Rick LaPierre, Tessel Collins, who's here tonight, Kenny Meyer, better known uh, affectionately as Muck, in his great production of the golden days of radio on the 50th anniversary shows, which I remember, and I had the opportunity to announce the big bands on those programs. That was really a memorable moment for me. And Kenny Kale, who I'm happy to say, uh, happy to say is coming to WTIC with me uh, to produce the No program. My thanks, too, to people behind the scenes, Betsy Atwood, Mary Zapula, who answers all the complaints, a bit unsmiling at times. Pat Randall, who listens to everybody's gripes with a sympathetic ear. The entire traffic department, the BZ sales department, who always kept us sold out. And, of course, the engineering department, headed by Norm Graham, who operates under difficult conditions, and all the technicians who work this program nightly. Lee Holbrook, who's here tonight, and uh, Warren Ollenbach, Don Tortorella, Charlie Dinsmore, Fred Stroud, Dwight McComber, Carol Jeffries, Allison Frisbee, Frank Edmonds. And last but not least, the uh, great group of professional broadcasters who perform on this station. Carl DeSouz, Bob Rawley, Dave Maynard, Guy Manella, Bob Wilson, Johnny Most, Lavelle Diet, Dick Pace, Bill Smith, Larry Glick, and those who were here before, Jim Sands and Larry Justice. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. They are the people who make this a great station. Because they are the people you know and who you communicate with. And after all, that is what radio is all about. Nothing more and nothing less, just communication. And of course, the fabulous BZ News staff headed by Ed Bell, Gary LaPierre, Don Batting, Stephen Smith, Ted Larson, Listo Fisher, Anne McGrath, Daryl Gould, Harry Savas, Art Gardner, Nancy Kaplowski, and Ed Bell. It's the best news staff I've ever worked with. I have to gain control, excuse me. And that is why it's been such a distinct pleasure working here. My memories are quite distinct. The 68 election, the uh, terror of the Chicago Convention, <clears throat> the horror of Vietnam, that agonizing call from the Vietnam veteran which caused such a stir. I'll never forget that black man who called for love between the races and a thousand other touching and memorable calls. The Nixon-McGovern election, of course, Watergate, and your encouragement to stay with it, although there were severe pressures to drop that matter. Your great response to the calls for letters to congressmen, to the networks, the end of the war, Nixon's resignation. And there was fun, a great deal of fun, many a belly laugh and chuckles here and there, and emotions on every level, because that is what radio talk shows are all about. The concept of people being able to express themselves and to talk to one another by simply using the telephone is a microphone. That has always excited me. There are the critics of this kind of communication who feel that people who participate are nutty. Now, that's not so. People who participate are an amazing cross-section of America. Just people, all kinds of people. And isn't it about time that just people had a forum of their own? I truly believe in this form of radio, and I do hope it stays with us. I've been involved in talk radio now for 25 of the 30 years in broadcasting, but these eight years have been the most meaningful and stimulating because, I suppose, of the, because of the nature of the times and the issues. And of course, it's because it's been on this great station, WBZ, and its capability of reaching so many people in so many states. Your letters, they overwhelm me, literally. Thousands of them from over 30 states and the kind words expressed in them. It is beyond my capacity to reply. I shall keep them and treasure them, and I thank you for them. I hope I would be happy to give them to the Westinghouse executives in New York or here for them to read that kind of mail. Now, being a social critic is not an easy role. You make enemies. Many of them in high places. Pressures upon you are constant, sometimes insidious, 
both covert and overt. And when you are the employee of a large communications organization, one never knows the source of the pressure or criticism. But that is part of what I do when I expect that to happen and I accept the pitfalls. And then there are pressures from people who listen to the program and do not like what is being said and would in effect like to silence the voices of dissent. They are dangerous to America. Sometimes pressures from advertisers, but rarely these days. And of course, there's the pressure of the nightly performance. Four hours a day of criticism on everything from dirty streets to presidents. Many nights since I am but human, I do not feel like doing the four hours, and it takes an enormous amount of discipline to psych oneself up for the night ahead. Not only must you be prepared for the program ahead, but you must be instantly ready for an immediate response from the public to what you've just uttered. Then, of course, the obligation to the audience to be as accurate on the issues as one possibly can be. And what with a zero budget and no research staffs, it is difficult. And one of the most obvious pressures is to keep it entertaining and humorous when the occasion arises. Some observers feel, looking from the outside in, that nothing could be easier than sitting down for four hours and batting the breeze. And you still have to perform the commercials and hawk the goods that are necessary to your survival. And then there's, of course, the ratings. If you don't get them, you don't exist. So in summary, pressures from management, the public, politicians in high places, and people in hidden places make this job a difficult one. I'm not crying the blues because I love the work. And I would not do it if it was not satisfying and stimulating. But I did want to let you know what goes on behind the scenes as well. My ambitions have somewhat dimmed with age. I'd be always, I've always wanted to do more television, but as luck would have it, that has not occurred. Perhaps I will get a further opportunity, and if not, it no longer disturbs me as it did when I was younger. I think now less in terms of career ambition, but more in terms of life fulfillment, family, friends, children, and only with age and maturity do you find out that that is truly what life is all about. And if only I could find my island, that would be nice. Well, perhaps I will. I love the Cape, and someday that might be my island, or maybe one of Florida's great beaches. Who knows? I'm still searching, and I don't know for what. But the most important factor in what I do is you, the listener. Without your participation and acceptance, uh, this type of program could not exist. The essence of freedom and the First Amendment are embodied in this form of radio. Not many places are left on earth where one can speak out to hundreds of thousands of people about their own government and the high public officials who run their lives. This should not be taken for granted. Don't let it be. There are very few courageous radio and television stations or broadcasters around where true free speech is heard, so we must be ever vigilant about protecting this right. Now, I don't mean to sound like a candidate running for office. Hey, maybe that's a good idea, and maybe I'll do that. But I thank you for everything. It's been a good eight years. I have no regrets. Just sadness at this moment. This is a time, by the way, of the year for new beginnings and new challenges and atonement for one's past mistakes. So on October the 11th, I begin again, and perhaps I should leave you with a bit of personal philosophy. There is a glorious sun, not the sun you see in the sky, but a sun which is within ourselves, which is much brighter than the sun you see in the sky. When the sun comes out, it only dispels the darkness, but when this sun comes out, it dispels the darkness and ignorance both. It is much brighter than the sun that shines out. It is all within us, just within us. Now, excuse me for getting the lumps in my throat during that, but it's uh, difficult after spending uh, so much time here with so many good people. To uh, and I tried practicing that many times today, and I hoped that I would get it out of my system, but I didn't. 
So, uh, that's that. And um, I don't know whether it's fitting to play a commercial here or not, but uh, I guess that's what we better do. Man's need to spread the news has led to many great inventions, like the newspaper, radio and television, and the singing telegram. Happy birthday! Unfortunately, all these inventions suffered in one vital respect. They've never been fast enough, until now. Introducing Instant Eye. TV4's Instant Eye camera represents a whole new breakthrough in communication. As major news stories break, TV4 will be there, and so will you. Jumping Jack Sermon is alive and well in Roslindale. In fact, Sermons is now starting their 30th year with a great anniversary sale. To celebrate, Sermons is offering 20% off on all men's suits, sport coats, leathers, outerwear, and shoes. Save 20% on a three-piece vested suit or the two-piece classic double-breasted. The European silhouette is expressed in the many styles and fabrics. You'll marvel at Sermons' wide selection of winter coats and jackets in wools, corduroy, or stylish leathers, and all at 20% off. Leathers that are regularly ninety to two hundred dollars are now only seventy-two to one hundred sixty dollars. Save eighteen to forty dollars. You can even save twenty percent on famous make shoes, including the Spanish and Italian imports. Sermon's anniversary sale ends Saturday, October ninth, so you'll have to hurry for the best selections. Use Master Charge or Bank AmeriCard. Jumping Jack also invites you to open your own Sermon's Charge or use his convenient layaway. So shop Sermon's, nine Corinth Street in Roslindale Square. By the way, where is Roslindale? As of now, America, you can enjoy driving a six-passenger Chevrolet with more headroom, more rear seat legroom, and more trunk room than last year. The new Chevrolet for 1977. Now that's more like it. More.